Welcome to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell. Thank you for joining us this week for another amazing guest. Uh, Diana, how are you? I'm very well. Good, good. Uh, she has a company called Higher High. So Diana McElroy yep. um, is uh, one of the most, uh, I knew very little about cannabis, but we had a chance last week to talk and, and, and there's no one I've learned that, that uh, really explains things better than, than you do. Thank and you. So, uh, but first I'd like to start about where people are from and so on. So where were you born? Where did you grow up? And, and uh, how did you get into this business? <laughs> So I was born in Poland, actually. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, I came here when I was seven years old. I was, Are you fluent in, in language yes, in Polish? Yes, so okay. English is my second language. Oh, wow. I'm an ESL student. Okay. Um, I started school in the Bronx at uh -huh. PS105. Okay. Um, not speaking a word of English. Wow. And what age, how old were you when you came? Seven. Seven, okay. Seven. Okay. Um, and then we moved, typical like immigrants, we moved every two years trying to find our spot uh -huh. in the country uh so went from bronx to queens to long island wow. and then ended up in sixth grade in denville new jersey okay okay yep. Yep. now what did your what did your parents do if, if so um uh i was i was adopted by family and then okay. i was brought over um for that reason oh really yes. oh, okay yes. okay yes. so wow interesting yeah, yeah. interesting yep. the uh... and then it ended up in denville um went to saint mary's okay. then went to morris catholic for two years okay um, and then from there, I went to Morris Knowles for two years. Okay. Um, and County College for two years. I, I happen to have like a two-year yeah, record. Two year, there's, a, there's a two-year pattern. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. My husband's my longest commitment of almost 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then went to Fairleigh Dickinson. I'm yes. actually an alumni from Fairleigh Dickinson. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Yep. Yes, it's, yep. it's great. And as you know, I run the Rothman Institute of Innovation and Entrepreneurship at Fairleigh yep. Dickinson University, which yep. is why we connected, because yep. we're really looking at every aspect of entrepreneurship. And so, uh, so what were your first jobs kind of out of college, and, and how did you get it to this space? Oh, oh I've done everything uh, from house cleaning on down. But my first job out of college was I ended up at um, – in Newport Capital. Okay. Um, I laughed because I worked for five different firms uh -huh. and I never left my seat. We kept getting, our division kept getting purchased out by Tyco, oh, CIT. Oh, interesting, yes, and, okay. Yeah. Um, and I just happened as a temp right out of college because I graduated mid-year. Okay. And they offered me an IT position. Okay. I knew nothing about IT, but uh -huh. they liked my personality and wanted me part of the group. Oh, so I was there for five years. And then one of the partners actually started a firm and pulled me along to his firm for another five years. So wow. I ended up in the finance industry for five uh, for 10 years. For 10 years. Yep. And so uh, so today we're going to talk and learn a lot about cannabis. Yep. And so, but you're an, uh, an entrepreneur. You have yep. the entrepreneur state of mind, yes, which I is do. why you're here. And so, uh, so how did you get into higher high and uh, cannabis well in 2018 i kind of looked at I, I did take years off to be a stay-at-home mom uh -huh. and when you do that you kind of lose your track in right you in know the, in, the, in, in the, the traditional exactly your career, career kind of gets diverted right. um so 2018 i looked at the different industries and i had never picked my jobs they kind of picked me right, I, i've right. been very fortunate uh, opportunities found me and I said to my husband, you know what? Cannabis is the next thing that's coming down the pike. Right. And I see that it's starting to ramp up in New Jersey. Uh, 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 and um, what year was this? When was this? That was 2018. And 18, okay. Yep. 18, okay. And I started calling around, started, you know, just getting feelers of how do I break into this industry? And uh -huh. I didn't know a lot, but I knew that it interested me. Um, and someone sent me a little article that a farm down the street from my house uh -huh. was turning into a grow. Oh, really? An oh, MSO bought it. And it, they were going no, to No, MSO it. for the... the for multi-state operator. Multi-state, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, cause, cause this is going to be one-on-one. Because <laughs> mo most people have these stereotypes about marijuana yes. and cannabis. Yes, and do. so we're going to... By the time we're done, you're going to know more than you ever ever thought you'd know about t cannabis. Okay. So the, I went to the town hall meeting, uh -huh. and as did some of the local uh, people from the area. And they were very upset about having a cannabis mm -hmm. a company come in. I was very excited. Uh -huh. So I waited for the executives to leave the building. I followed them and asked them if they were gonna be hiring. Uh -huh. And they hired me to be a consultant for the first year because, Beautiful. yeah. And so my role was to just go out in the community and understand what people's hangups were. Yeah, yeah. And understand what their fears mm -hmm. and their um, trepidation over the product was, uh -huh. and educate myself. Right. What did you learn? What, what you did that? What did you What did you learn? Because many people who are watching probably have those same, same fears. Deal. So it was funny because I went into cannabis 
as a business because I saw an opportunity to you know grow. Uh -huh. It was it's a new industry, uh -huh. but it, I became a patient advocate right, through right. my understanding right. because I underst I started hearing stories. The more I immersed myself into it, the the only thing I knew about cannabis was back in my college days where I didn't like it. Right, right, because right, right. I didn't like the yeah. effects on it yeah. on my body. I, I, I smoke too much. I partook, you know, college kids use it in a different way right, sometimes. Right. And I decided to, to educate myself and I became really involved with patients. Mm. Um, and the more I learned from the patients and the aspect of what um, benefits, uh -huh. I became a patient advocate. Right, right. And so a year later, when we finally had product in the ground, um, Terrace and the company I worked for said, what would you like to mm -hmm. do within our company? And I said, I want to be community outreach. Those Terrace the company that hired yes. you? Yes. Okay. So they're a Canadian company that yeah. opened a division of Terrace and NJ in New Jersey. Okay. So I became their community outreach person, which allowed me to go out into the community allowed me to um, not only deal with the towns where we had, um, we opened two dispensaries, okay. one in Phillipsburg and one in okay. Maplewood. Okay, um, and so, does, so a dispensary does what? What is A uh, dispensary, right now, they're all medical-based because okay. New Jersey is just medical. Right. Um, so you have to get a recommendation from a doctor. Okay. And you get a medical card from mm. the DOH, um, Department of Health, and it allows you to go into a dispensary and purchase your medication. Okay, okay. But I know you've heard that adult use is coming down the pike. Right, right, right. So, right. so, but, but yep. so let's go because I, I again, I want to walk people through this so they really understand. So, when you buy it, what are you buying? Are you buying? What, what does it look like? What are you buying when you go into the dispensary? So it depends. For medical, so, uh, for you could buy tincture. Okay. Um, which is like a liquid form, condensed okay. liquid form. Oh, really? Really? Yes. Okay. Um, you could buy, you could add it to your food. Okay. Um, you could add it to your drinks. Um, you could buy um, smoke flour. Okay. Um, you could buy edibles. Right now, the only thing allowed in New Jersey is soft lozenges. Okay. Um, other states allow different forms of consumption. Okay. And my cough drops. Is my cough drops, yes. Really? Yes. And that can have medicinal benefits, so those stuff. You don't have to be, you don't have to have a, a, a joint. You know, no. they don't, they're not selling joints but in the I place will, and you... Well, you can. You can buy a right. roll because I will tell you for myself, I'm going to out myself, I use cannabis as a patient because I have anxiety uh -huh. and I also um, use it as a form of a sleep aid. Okay. Oh, really? Yes. And for me, you have to really? understand di the different forms of consumption and how they affect you. Yeah. Flour, which is the old-fashioned smoking. Right. It, the onset is very quick, right? And it only lasts for about, let's say, an hour. So the duration is short. The onset is quick and short. Exactly. Okay. So I like it for that reason okay. because I could understand and I know how to control it. Um, some people like edibles. Right. Edibles can take a much longer time to absorb into your system. Right. They're going through the liver, and they can sometimes it can take about an hour and a half to even but to really get, feel, get into exactly like an allergy medicine it takes like two exactly, hours before it exactly exactly so you fu fully have the absorption yeah, yeah. and that's um, why i really lauded you to, yep. on the show because you really explain you know everybody says cannabis yep. well cannabis is a hundred different things and there are ways thousand, you use it and, 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 and you yep. you really taught me that last week and it's like wow i didn't realize that it's it's, it's it not one a, thing it is not one thing it is a medication and people utilize it as a medication you know um we're asking for different forms of consumption uh -huh. because in Pennsylvania, for example, our company was multi-state, um, we have suppositories because uh -huh. there are patients that can't swallow anything, right, right, you know? Right. Um, there are children who use it for mul multiple reasons, whether it be they're being treated for cancer right. or epilepsy. Um, in New Jersey, there's, you know, 17 qualifying conditions. In Pennsylvania, there's more. So right. every state is very specific. Interesting. And very, yes. and very different. The, and uh, very different. Now, now, what about, and we'll, we'll go to the, the you know, the, the biggest question, the addiction. You know, is it can you get addicted to, to cannabis? So... It's not, I'm going to be, speak honestly, I have seen people who um, lean on it right, very hard. Right, right. And I think if you have that personality, right. it's... It same with alcohol, right? It, I mean, the yes. same thing. You lean on alcohol to get, when you're the, feeling down, you, you, you know. Yeah, that's exactly. But the difference is, like, a cannabis works with your endocannabinoid system, uh. which was discovered um, in the 90s, and it really is your body system for regulating itself. Okay, and it's called the 
endocannabinoid system. Endocannabinoid. Yes. Endocannabinoid. And yes. everyone has a different one everyone and has, responds differently to exactly. this. Exactly. So. All mammals have endocannabinoid right. systems. And what cannabis does is it really unlocks the key. It's like a key mechanism to mm. unlock the system. Okay. Um, and that's why it puts you in a homogeneous state where right. you just feel relaxed. You know, I think when we were talking, I kind of explained it almost like... Uh, the first glass of wine where you just feel very calm right right and the same with cannabis it's like you know you have to understand how it affects your body right and it right. is a dosing journey right like people go into a dispensary and they you know i want to try this and i want to try this and i want to try this because this is the effect i'm looking for whether it's a, for me it's insomnia right not every product's going to work the same. Right and, right, and not everybody's body is going to react, it's gonna react the, the, exactly. the same way. In, yep. in fact, in fact, just recently, you know, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, you know, was saying, you know, when I when I when I take it, I feel clear. I have a clear, and, and you're the only other person I heard because. Yep. In college, you hear the people who are taking it, and they have anything but clear minds. So, I, so it's a that's stereotype. Why it is a stereotype, but it was also the way I consumed in college. Right, right. So if I could, I'm going to out myself, and in college, they, we smoked blunts, and we just sat around, and I, I had right. a one crazy summer where I experimented, and I hated it. Right, Because right. I like to be social, and I right. like to talk, and right. I sit there and yeah, drool. And just kind of veg out and yes. eat. And, eat. <laughs> and I realized that that was not for me. I found it again as an adult, and I found it as a medicine as an right. adult, and I found that, like, for me, one hit, two hits, and I'm good. Uh -huh. And to your friend's point, it does clear the cobwebs for yeah, me. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what you were saying. And, yep. and the other thing about you is, you know, again, if you can see him, she's high energy. You know, so many of the stereotype or the, you know, yep. the, you know they're, they're just low energy and yep. so mellow and half asleep. And, and so I like the fact that, 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 you know, you're medically using it medically, yep. but you have high energy. Well, because I'm not also, I'm not medicated all the time. Right, right. And for me, the way cannabis works with my system is it revs me. Right, right. So, like, I will utilize the medication and then go and then teach a yoga class. Or right. I will go and go for a hike because right. that's the way... It responds with my um, with my body. Is that the dosage that allows you to be more energetic, or what? what is it, it a is, certain type of cannabis? It's that just the way my body reacts. To oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it's the way my body, and it's funny because indica is supposed to make you sleepy. Right. My body doesn't react to cannabis that R way. Really and people are like, "Oh, sativa is more uplifting, and right. indica is more." For me, for whatever reason, my endocannabinoid system and, and just the way I respond to the medication, it revs me. Right. But then because of being active, it does help with my insomnia right, because, right. you know, I'll go for a two-hour walk, come home, and I'm exhausted, right, and I can right. sleep better. Okay, interesting. Yep, yep. And, and, you know, the thing when, when people talk about steroids is that not that steroids make you, make you better, but steroids help you train better. Yep. Now, can, can cannabis do that? Can that help you? 100%. 100%, uh, really? yes. Interesting. So interesting. I, I'll give you an example. I went to um, the MJ Biz, which is the biggest cannabis conference in like the country. Okay. Um, and what's it called? It's called? MJ Biz. MJ Biz. Yes, oh, okay. and it's in uh, uh, Vegas. Oh, it's in Vegas. And Everything, all these conferences are in Vegas. Yes. So let me know. We're going to take a commercial okay. break, a short commercial break, because I, I want to I want to yep. hear this. Um, and uh, we'll be right back after the commercial break and, and continue this fascinating discussion. Black Friday used to mean long lines and deals gone in a flash. That was Black Friday then. This is Black Friday now. This year, Target has Black Friday deals all November, with new deals each week, in-store and on Target.com. So you can get all the Black Friday savings without all the Black Friday stress. No matter how you shop, it's Black Friday now at Target. Is everything ready for tomorrow? Planning, shopping, Caring, washing, slicing, dodging, chopping, weeping, mashing, grating. And now, what oil are you going to use to cook all that effort? Introducing Bertole Cooking Olive Oil. Ideal for cooking. Bertole, elevate your every meal.
Welcome back to Entrepreneur State of Mind. We're having a wonderful conversation about cannabis, and we were talking about the largest conference uh, in the country yep. around this business, and it's in Vegas, of course. Yep. And so talk, talk to me about that. So yeah. the reason I was bringing it up is you asked, you know, can it help with your, your training, endurance right. and training? Yeah. So I microdosed when I was there, which means that... I lost six pounds wow. because wow. I was going. I was uh, not going to miss any opportunity. I was paying for my own way. Right, you know, as right, an entrepreneur, right, 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 when exactly. you're fine You wanted your, to earn every dollar. You wanted, yeah. and I wanted to be at every networking event. And so I would microdose, and what that would do is alleviate the um, the pain that my body was going right, through. Right. Because I was really, I mean, ask my husband, I was waking up at 6 and going to bed at 3.30 in the morning wow. because a lot of the events, the the parties afterwards were really where the networking was happening right, and where right. you were meeting the people. Um, so cannabis does help the inflammation. It yeah. helps, you know, the the pain that you can go through. Right. Um, yeah, and it's it, microdosing is just, you know, taking mm. a hit mm. and not feeling messed up. It just clears the cobwebs right. and you're able to power through. And now how do you microdose? What 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 format So do you for use? me, a flower. For it's, me, it's for flour. Smoking, smoking. Yes. Okay. Yes. So when you say yep. flower, I'm, yes. I'm learning these terms. Yes. And so the uh, flower is like the original form. Well, right. Of, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. You call it flower. Yes. The, uh, and so instead of smoking a joint, right. I take a hit and I'm that's and, and, and yeah. it's done. And, and it's done. And, and it would yep. be the same as one puff? Yes. Yep. Really? Wow. Yep. And that has enough the... Uh, so one of the things I, I was uh, talking in the break is, uh, so, you know, marijuana, you know, that name is, seems to be going out and now it's cannabis. Is there a difference between marijuana and cannabis? So that's the funny part. We in Pennsylvania have to call it marijuana. Right. Oh, really? In New Jersey, marijuana is illegal, right. but cannabis is legal. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, so well, every But it state, refers to the same thing? It's the same product. Interesting. But wow. it's how the states have um, adopted Right. their understanding and right. their rules for the plant. Interesting. Yes. The, uh, so we've talked a lot about the legal version of it. We've talked about medical marijuana. Yeah. Uh, New Jersey um, you know, has approved to have the recreational. Yep. And so well, tell us, what, are the, what does that mean? What are, the, what are the rules around that and who can use that and what, so what's going on? So we don't know what the rules and regs are yet. Okay. They're being written. Okay. We're hoping to have them out in the next couple months. Um, they are following the Massachusetts program. Okay. which I have been to dispensaries in Massachusetts, okay. and I've been to dispensaries in Nevada, just other states. And so recreational is legal in, in Massachusetts? Yes, it yes. Is. Okay. So, for example, in New Jersey, I do know that like patients will not be paying taxes on it. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Um, the, there's 12 dispensary, or excuse me, 12 uh, cultivators right now in New Jersey in order for them to convert to, and I don't like recreational. Recreational right. sends us right, right, down. Right. I like adult use. Adult use, okay. Because good. as a okay, parent, we'll right. you know, right. alcohol is adult use. Right. Cannabis is adult use. Okay, good. Unless you're a child who is using it and then you have a caregiver, um, whether it be a grandparent or a parent oh. who's administering the right. product. So when we talk about adult use, adult use is going to be for 21 and over, okay. and they can go into a dispensary and they okay. can purchase the product. And the 12 current cultivators um, have to prove that they will have enough product to provide for their medicals first right, right. and then for adult use. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yep. And so those 12 were picked by the state? They were. They were the original 12, okay. and now we have more licenses coming out, and there's going to be more cultivators in the state capped at 37. So, so okay, so you're a cultivator. What does that mean? What do you do? Do you grow? You do, do you, and I uh, had the advantage okay. of one of the few people in, in New Jersey that I had the advantage of working in a grow. Right, okay. So we grew the product. When right. I say we, I meant the people right. at, on right, the, right. Farm. At, at the farm. And these are, let me tell you, these are really, really highly skilled individuals yeah. because it's not an easy product to grow. Oh, interesting. Yeah, oh, interesting. it's not a, it's, it's very, um, it, 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 it's temperamental and you're growing it like a medication so you right. have to make sure that there's no you know contaminants in the building right. it's very at least our it's very grow, organic huh? it's very organic yeah. and also very high, highly clean you right. know like right. we would have to wear ppe to walk into oh, really? where the plants are oh, really? yes because we're growing a medication yeah, you know and i do have to say my company took really high standards in how they treated the plant okay yeah. so you, so you grow it i i had I have bamboo trees in my back, and they grow like anything. So oh, it's, you know, yeah, they're invasive. Yeah. 
So, um, all right, so you grow it, and then yes. from the grow, what's the process? You, you grow, grow it, it you, oh, you harvest it, so okay. you cut it down, and then you dry it. So harvesting is, I mean, what do you do to the plant? You just you cut it. You just cut it. You, you cut, cut it. it you cut it, and you take these huge, and I, um, I wish I'd, uh, I do on my camera roll, I could show you later. They're these huge plants, uh -huh. and then they take them, and they take all the, fl uh, the um, leaves off. Okay. You know that five, uh, yeah. Right, the five, yeah. 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 You take those off and you actually hang it up and you dry it. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. And from there, they either take them. Um, you could, there's so many different forms you could do. You could flash freeze it right. and use it in a lab okay. for um, manufacturing. Okay. So that's where you would get the edibles. That's right. where. Oh, I see. Yes. Okay. And they okay. actually make an oil out of it. Okay. Um, uh, or you can use it as, and they debud it, okay. um, and that's the flour. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. And they put it into jars. They measure everything. Is you know very technical and very organized. But it's always dried first. It's always dried first. Yeah. yeah. I always wonder how people come up with these things. Like, who yeah. was the first person to say, "Hey, let me dry this plant"? And you know, I I would love to know that too. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. 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 But it was, I mean, it was considered a medication for many many years. It was yeah. sold in pharmacies yeah. for many years. You know, yeah. There's there's old, until they decided on the war on drugs. Right. In the U.S., for example. Certain farmers were mandated to grow hemp. Hemp is a form of cannabis. Yeah, right. And okay. so a lot of towns that have the word hemp in them, right. Hempstead Heath, hemp, right. they were actually areas that, so, that grew hemp. The, I was yep. in, in South Africa way back in the, in the 80s, and, and, and hemp was legal. They were talking yep. about yep. hemp and why it was that apparently it impacted some of the some of the, the businesses or something, yep. and so there was some political you know, yep. politics is at the heart of stuff. All right, so you 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 uh, you, you harvest the plant, they develop it. Does these do these same companies have stores? Are they the ones who can yes. have stores, or so, can anybody else have a store? So the way our company was, it was called vertically integrated. Right. So okay, we right. were allowed okay. to our license involved having um, a grow a lab, a facility, a distribution center. Right. Um, so we were allowed to have everything. Now the state is breaking it up and they're giving out different licenses. Okay. For yes, for different. So you. Could so the twelve, but they'll 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 produce it, but they'll but they'll be able to have a store. Yes. So we on. had a, we had dispensaries. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and the store that you um, speak of is called a dispensary. Dispensary. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, now going forward, they're breaking it up to different uh, categories, different classes of licenses. Okay. And you could either be a delivery, you could be a um, grow facility, you could be a distributor, okay. you could be a wholesaler. So a lot of jobs. A lot of yes, jobs. A lot of jobs. So, lot so, of so now what about the banking? Now I understand yep. that because it's federally not legal, um, yeah, how, do, how do you deal with, with the banking? So even for myself, even right. though I'm not touch a uh, plant touching company, right. um, I am a PR slash consulting firm within the space. Even for me, I had to disclose to my federal, my federal credit union, who I've been with for 30 years, hey, I'm working in the cannabis space. Oh, interesting. Okay. And it was very funny because the lady said to me, oh, okay, hold on, let me call you back. Right, I don't know right, if we right, can take right, you. Right. Um, and she called me back and she said, thank you for disclosing that you will be working with cannabis uh -huh. because they themselves are learning the rules. Right. So it is federally uh, still classified Schedule One drug, which right. is crazy to me. Right. Um, and the, the banks, some of the big banks are doing it with you know, um, subsidiaries right, are right. allowing the banking, right. but a lot of your smaller credit unions are more open to it. Right. No, and yeah. So I, I, I have a nonprofit foundation, and so it's a potential opportunity for foundations, right? Because yeah. to give some of the money back to the community and yes. other things, so yep. foundations that are actually doing good stuff in the community could be an opportunity to get money, yep. money for, uh, for, for that. And yep. so um, do you think, what's the prospect for the federal uh, change federally? since more and more states are doing this. So it's funny. It depends who you ask. I think it's going to be federally legalized. Uh -huh. And I've heard many arguments on both sides where some of the people who have been legacy growers, uh -huh. um, or we used to refer to them as black market, which is completely um, right. kind of termed de derogatory now. Right, right, yeah, right. because it did have such so social impact, right. you know, on black and brown people. So right, right. we're pulling away from that term and we're calling it legacy. They don't want to be federally legalized. Right. Um, some patients don't want it to be federally legalized because they're afraid that the federal government is going to allow all the big pharma companies right. to come in, right. you know, big tobacco and take right. take all the profits. Right. So 
Do I think it's going to be federally legalized? I think so eventually. Right. I mean, we even had uh, Judge Thompson, the most convert, Tom yeah, <laughs> the most conservative judge on the Supreme Court, say, I don't understand why this is still illegal. Right. You right. know, so the it's definitely it, the viewpoint is definitely yeah. changing. Yeah. Well, that's that's interesting because one of the things, one of my biggest fights is you know running Entrepreneurial Institute, doing these shows, is that the big companies because they have money pay off you know, through lobbyists, and so they get all the, ra and, and they're killing entrepreneurship. In this yeah. country, I'm, I'm, you know, one of the things I've advocated is that if, if every politician in America had to have made payroll, then this would be a very different country because they understand how important entrepreneurs are yep. to this economy, yep. but how hard it is. And the government yes. is just making it harder. Yep. But, and there's some fear that I hadn't really thought about it. If it becomes federally legal, then the big companies will squeeze out the little ones yep. like they do with everything else. And it'll be bad for consumers, it'll be bad for the economy, it'll be bad for jobs. So it might, or it might uh, offer more jobs into the space. Um, I think what's going to happen is we're going to have almost like I equate it to beer, uh -huh. okay? Uh -huh. You have the Coors, the Budweiser, right, right. and then you have these microbreweries mm -hmm. that have mm -hmm. popped up and they have a much better quality product right, and right. people are willing to pay a little more and the same can go for cannabis right. because people who are connoisseurs and really you know understand the product mm -hmm. they want that craft cannabis right. they want right. that cannabis that was you know treated with teeth the like tender loving care and right. they want you know the higher strains the more um hard to find strains mm -hmm. so yeah well, again, I, I can't wait for the day to have legislation that says it's only for companies with 50 or fewer employees yes. for, for various products. And so that would, that would be a, a level so playing New field. So Jer New Jersey is allowing for micro licenses. And that's one of the things that they said is you could only have 10 employees. You could only be, have a space this big. You uh -huh. have to be 51%. Um, the uh, management has to live in the town. Right, so they've right. made it very specific because what they're hoping to do is, number one, help social equity right, uh, right. Um, applicants, and number two, they're trying to make sure that the little guy has a foothold right. in the space. And listen, especially yep. now as it's getting, getting going. Because if you're not if you're not there at the beginning, yep. you're going to be squeezed out. Yes. So, yep. uh, Diana, this has been great. We're at the end of time, so okay. it, it goes very very quickly. It does. But I've learned a lot. I hope, uh, and I know my audience has learned a lot about this space. And uh, it's not as much to be scared of no. as 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 some people will make it uh, make it to be. So so again, thank you very much. Thank you so much for okay. that opportunity. Thanks for watching Entrepreneur State of Mind, and we will see you next week. Take care. Bye bye.